What is up guys? Welcome to the vlog. We have got a pretty big project that we have got to do tonight. Um, basically, over the course of the last, I would say, year or so, my Z, I've noticed that when you go to full lock when drifting, the car is starting to somewhat bind. Um, basically, what I mean is the steering wheel is getting stuck at full lock and you've got to kind of like pop it out of full lock to get the wheels to uh, basically go back the other direction. Um, so that is a cause of my offset rack spacers um, that basically causes the spacer um, to put a little bit of pressure on the rack and over time it disintegrates the rack and causes the car to have binding issues and eventually the entire rack will fail and that is what has been going on but it has gotten to the point that the entire rack is now leaking which I will show you basically when I turn this wheel this rack is leaking a ton of fluid so my power steering is starting to fail and uh, it's not a good thing so basically I picked up a, another spare rack and cross member from my good friend Alan. You guys may know him as Ambush Drift. Um, this is out of his 350Z. Um, he put another one in, had it welded. But basically, we picked it up and then I picked up the PBM um, rack relocation brackets. So you can see right here, that's what all this gold is. I had this rack sent off to my good friend, Andrew Huffman, and I uh, basically told him that I want to use this PBM kit because you can do it two ways. You can relocate the kit two ways. You can either fabricate your own mounts and you can cut the rack. As you can see, it's cut. And you can make the rack uh, move forward an extra 26 millimeters, which will get rid of the offset rack um, spacer. Or you can use this newly founded PBM uh, rack relocation kit and it moves it forward 36 millimeters. So that's definitely what we went with. So using the PBM kit may be a little tricky because not many people have used this kit. There's no tutorials online and I haven't seen anybody personally use it that I know of. Um, but we ended up getting it to work. And as you can see, Huffman cut the rack, moved it forward put these new bushings and mounts in and move this entire rack forward. So this is the new one. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna take the rack out of the other car and I'm gonna show you the differences real quick. So this is the old rack, as you can see. This is the new one. Now basically when we say we move the rack forwards, basically you're looking from the back of the car, okay? So we're standing at the middle of the car when you're looking at from this direction. The front of the car would be over here or over here. So with the old one, as you can see, the thickness of the cross member, use these holes as references. They're about an inch to inch and a half away from the edge, and then there's another like two inch gap to the uh, to the rack itself. If you come over here, those same holes are here, and the rack is about a half an inch from the rack. So it's been moved forward 36 millimeters. Here's a up top view. You can kind of see the differences. This is this is a lot thinner. It's been thinned out compared to this one, and the rack is a lot closer. So basically, because of that, the steering column, which comes down here and connects onto the shaft, because this is now closer to the front of the car, the power steer or not power steering, the um, steering column linkage can't reach onto this uh, this knob. So that is what the adapter piece is for. It sits on here, and then it uh, fills that gap to the steering column. So basically the only thing left now is we gotta get this new one. We gotta take these tie rods off because I don't run 350Z tie rods. With Mega Mantis you run a S14 tie rod. So we run like a, uh, a 240 Zenki or Kuki tie rod. Uh, these are just too short. So we're gonna have to disconnect these. I'm gonna have to get my new tie rods, well, old new tie rods that are over there and plug them in and uh, then we have to center the rack. All right, so now that you see the differences and how much thinner this section is on the cross member and how much more forward this is gonna be pushed to the front of the car, you can see how this is gonna help a ton. Um, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna allow those wheels to turn probably with more angle with my angle kit and my tie rods will be parallel with the rack which takes all the pressure off of the rack. So uh, basically this is what I'm talking about. The tie rods will be equal with the rack like it is here and it will take a bunch of pressure off the rack because right now how it's set up is the rack comes out, I have an offset rack spacer and then the tie rods here. So it puts a lot of undue stress on this, uh, these cylinders and gears in here. So that's what we're doing and by doing that 
Also, we should be able to get rid of the bump stops that is on the angle kit, on the uh, LCAs, and that will allow us to get just a little bit more angle out of the angle kit, and the steering will be way more fluid, and everything is just going to feel a lot better when drifting. So this is something I've been needing to do for a while. I've just been putting it off because the rack has been working. It's been fine, but I've noticed it getting worse and worse, and now that it's completely, pretty much completely gone, it's time to change it. All right, so without further ado, we're going to lift up the car. We're going to take the tires off, and then I'm going to uh, probably disconnect the tie rods from the knuckle and put those out of the way. Um, and then we've got to disconnect the steering column. We got to disconnect from what it looks like on this one. We are going to have to disconnect the hoses, which I believe go onto here. That is for the power steering. Um, this is the steering column link. And um, there's probably a couple bolts. It looks like there's a couple bolts up here that's going to hold the actual cross member in. And then we're going to have to support the engine. So we're probably going to use one of these jacks and uh, the lift. And uh, we're going to hold it up probably on the oil pan and the bell housing. And that will support the motor and allow us to take this out. Because this actually acts as the uh, one of the engine um, basically mounts. It kind of holds the engine and bell housing up. So without this, the engine can droop down or fall out, which would not be good at all. It would probably crush, it, crush us. So that is what we are going to do. So what's super cool is we didn't just order the PBM relocation kit, we also got the steering column um, extension piece. So what this piece does, here let me get this camera to focus real quick. So what this piece does is it adapts this steering column uh, piece to the length of the new steering column. So what that means is because this rack is being moved forward, the steering column is going to have to be a little bit longer to reach onto here. So imagine the steering column is here. It reaches on here. Um, if you're moving this forward, though, the steering column would have to be a little bit longer. So what this piece does is it literally just goes and slides onto the rack, which I'll show you. And it sits on there. And then there's this bolt right here. And this bolt plugs in right here on the side. And it tightens down on the steering column. And now it's been extended 36 millimeters. So with this piece extending the steering column, we won't have to do any um, like pulling on the column. We won't have to extend it any other way. Just put this adapter on, and that kind of fills the gap that the uh, steering column has to reach to. So this is a really cool piece, and I believe, if I can get it off, I believe this piece right here was only like 20 bucks. So that saves us a lot of time for 20 bucks. It's definitely worth it if you buy the PBM relocation kit. But yeah, let's get this uh, sucker put into the car now. All right, so we got all the wheels off and we got everything lifted up. We did have to take uh, just a little bit of a break because it started raining really crazily. Um, uh, actually, because it started raining, we did something. Because it started raining, we actually took the Z's out, did some drifting. That's Vinny's car, destroyed and dirty. My dad's car, super dirty as well. My Z is like super dirty. Look at this. <laughs> so nasty. Just did some late night drifting since it's like 2 in the morning and it started raining so I thought we'd bring them out and just uh, tan them a little bit, goof off and uh, we'll give it time to stop raining so that way we can uh, come back and it's dry, well not dry, but stopped raining gives us some time now to get back on the uh, car and start working on it again. Anyways, where was I? Uh, we got everything lifted up, tires off. Um, basically, what we're going to do is we're going to take off the offset rack spacer, which is right there. Um, it's that little rusted bolt. We're going to take that totally off. We're going to disconnect the tie rod right here. And then we're going to take the LCA out. Um, we're going to take it out of back there. We're going to disconnect the sway bar link and possibly the coilover. I'm not too sure yet. Um, and then uh, we're going to start dropping all that and getting that disconnected. And then over here on the driver's side, after we get everything out, and we also do it on this side, we're going to take this, uh, this stupid like cross member bar out from underneath. It's like a subframe brace, basically, under, uh, under the car. Um, probably going to take that off. I don't think I'm going to use it anymore. I'm really sick of just taking that off every time I have to do anything under here. So we got to take that off. And then um, there is the power steering lines, which we have got to take out off. Tons of fun. And then the steering column linkage right there. So we'll have to disconnect that. So we are going to get started on that. 
All right, so we went ahead and we took the tie rods out, unplugged them from the uh, rack, took them out of the knuckle here, and then we also disconnected the back of the LCA where it connects into the rack. As you can see, there is no bolt there, so that it's still just hanging up, but it is totally disconnected. And then we went underneath and we took the subframe bracing out, or whatever you want to call it. Everyone calls it different names. I think it's the subframe bracing. Um, and then we did that uh, with the other side. Got the subframe brace right here. Um, the only thing left now is, like I was saying on the driver's side, we got to get this uh, steering column um, linkage out, which I gotta figure out how to do that. I haven't ever taken that apart yet, so that's new. Looks like it's just gonna be that bolt right there, and then it should just slide out, and then uh, looks like that pin locks it in and it should just disconnect. I'm sure it's probably gonna be more difficult than that. But I think that's how it's done. And then I believe those lines get disconnected and that one slides off. And then I should free up the rack. Should be able to just take the cross member out with these bolts here and drop it out. But we will have to support the engine. All right guys, so we went ahead and we took the hose clamp off on uh, this hose and then just slid it off of this nipple here and then we took this one, it's a hard line, it's a 14, and uh, unscrewed it and pulled it out, and then we put a little bucket down here, so that way we can drain the uh, power steering fluid. Um, so these are out of the way. The only thing left now is to disconnect the steering column, but it is very hard to see at night, so we are gonna get some sleep for the rest of the night because it's like four in the morning, and uh, yeah, we're gonna try to get whatever amount of sleep we can get. And we are going to come back to this first thing in the morning. So, all right, day two. And it is nice and sunny, and I can finally see in here. So we still got to take that uh, steering column linkage out. It's probably better that we let it sit overnight, because now we've got this pretty much a quarter way full with the power steering fluid, so we don't have to worry about that. Um, we can get that out of the way, and then we can now focus on that linkage. So like I said, it looks like we got to take that pin out, and then I'm going to probably have my dad sit in the car and hold the wheel, and I'm gonna see if I can slip that link off. Um, you gotta make sure that the wheel is locked or that somebody is holding it straight because you don't want it to spin once you disconnect that. That will be a disaster. All right, so I called my dad out here to help with it. Basically what we did for the steering wheel was bungeed it so that way it won't move. And he took it apart. He saw how it went together. How, what did you do? It's pr just a U-joint link with two 14 mil, well actually two 12 millimeter bolts, one here and one here, and you take the bolts out and it slides up the steering shaft. Yeah, it connected column. to right there. It's just kind of like, it slid on right and then clamped around it, yeah. tightened on around yeah. it. Okay, that looks pretty simple. Next thing we're trying to do is we're trying to figure out the geometry of Mega Mantis, kind of funny. Those links back here kind of hold the cross member in. So even though they're unbolted, we still need to unbolt, looks like maybe this tension arm, and then maybe the sway bar link, and then maybe drop the LCA down so that way we can slide it out the other way. It's confusing, but if you don't have Mega Mantis or even WiseFab or PBM, you probably won't have to do that. It's just these angle kits, it's kind of how they work. All right, so here's what we did. We took the, what was that, tension arm out. Um, and then when we disconnected the tension arm, we moved the LCA over, and that gives us access right here to the actual cross member where it mounts to the LCA. And then we've got two jacks. Here's that. We've got two jacks. We've got a jack on the oil pan. Now, yes, I know it sounds sketchy, but everyone does it. Very Put light, a piece of very, wood. Very lightly. Yeah, very lightly, just supporting it. And then we have another jack on the bottom of the bell housing. And then we're gonna do these three bolts. There's one here, which is a 19. One over there, which is a 19. And then the last one is going to be the motor. Yeah, mama. if you look at where it connects to the LCA, the cross member, it's inside there, and it's also a 19. You're going to need an extension on it. So those three, those three on that side, and then this should come down. We got both sides disconnected. We took the three mounts off, and we've got the rack sort of out. It looks like it's out. And then we realized that there's something else holding it on. There's no videos anywhere and nobody anywhere that explains that these lines have two mounts. There's one mount over here on this side, which is being held by that bolt, which I'll show you where it's at. 
It's literally right there. And then there's another mount right there, right here. So you need to take those mounts off to disconnect those lines because those are the power steering lines that stay in the car. All right, rack is out and here it is. And uh, then we have to center the rack, which I will show you guys next. Okay, so the rack from what we believe right now is somewhat sort of centered. I think this side's out a little bit more, but to figure that out, basically, you can either do it one of two ways. This is the adapter that is going to extend the steering column. You can put um, a wrench on here and twist it. I'm just going to use the steering column adapter, so that way we're putting no extra pressure on those threads. But basically, you're going to want to turn the rack all the way to one direction. Just moving it all the way left. All right. So you're going to want to make a mark to where it's at. So you want to get a Sharpie. You're going to want to mark. We're going to just line up this line. We're going to follow this line with here. Okay, so this is all the way left. And then you want to spin it all the way right. And you want to count your rotations. So. One rotation. Two rotations, and I would say two in almost three quarters of a rotation. So you're then going to want to put a mark where it stops again. So you have two in th about three, almost three quarters, I'd say like a little over two and a half turns on the rack. You're going to want to turn it one full rotation back to here. So, one rotation back to the mark, and then we're going to want to go one, one half rotation to the mid middle of these two lines. So, the middle would be about right there, I would say. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. But you want as close as possible. I'd say that is right at the middle, right about here. So that is the center direct. As you can see, by the bellows, it's about the same amount of pressure on the bellows on both sides. So that's how you center a rack. Doing it in the car would be the same way, except of course you wouldn't have access to this piece as easily. So you would count the rotations on the wheel. You would turn the wheel. Um, all the way to the left or all the way to the right and then count the rotations all the way back and if it's let's just say three rotations to make it easy you would turn it the wheel one and a half times and that would be a centered rack but having it out of the car is a lot easier because you can put marks on the rack and get it a little bit more accurate so that is a centered rack it is now ready to be installed in the car all right so sadly it started raining like really bad so it's been like an hour and a half of crazy downpour so we had to take a break but we brought the rack inside and we took the uh, the tie rods off we uh, on both sides got the extension for the um, steering column linkage on there and then we also took off the bellows and then the caps and locks for the end of the tie rods All right now that we got both of them completely done all the parts transferred also put this uh, piece over for the um, power steering lines it holds the side of them uh, had to transfer it from the old one onto the new one uh, but now that we got everything done and we got everything out of the way and unbolted we can start putting this one back in so it's basically just going to be the reverse order of how to take it out so i'm not going to film any of that so we are going to slap this in and then we are going to see how fluid the wheel is we're going to do some tests with it and see how much angle we get out of the car now. all right so we went ahead and turned the wheel so you can kind of see in here and see what we did basically my old tie rods which i was running s14 tie rods from a uh, kooky or zenki uh, s14 uh, 240sx and uh, even though they're longer than 350Z tie rods, they were still way too short. So these are super length, um, cut to length GK Tech uh, tie rods. So they're $29 a piece, pretty cheap, but uh, they're 14 inches long. We cut them to, I believe, uh, 12 and a half inches. Uh, so we took like an inch and a half off and uh, threaded them on. So they're perfect length. Uh, the only thing I haven't done is I haven't taken these bump stops off yet, so I'm still at the same angle, which I prefer, so I'm probably going to leave that the way it is, because um, I really don't need any more angle. This is 
already plenty and uh, I've never needed more for anything so you know if I ever do need it I can always add it on um, but you know I, I don't I don't need any more angle I, I don't think right now so that's cool um, basically the rack as you see in there is completely in and everything is fitting perfectly we had to build a little bracket for the power steering lines I don't know if you can see that right there there's a little bracket that we had to that we had to fab up it's just like uh, got a piece of steel and then we cut it about that long and then put two holes and put the brackets or the power steering lines through the bracket and then hooked it up so that was a little bit of fab work um, but we got everything else back on tightened everything down and then I brought the car to my good friend Pedro over at Nissan and uh, he threw it on the alignment rack and we did a full drift spec alignment which I was sort of running before but not this aggressive because I was also driving this car on the road and uh, I was street drifting with it but now since I've got that one I don't have to worry about it so I've got all this crazy as you can see I'm sure you can tell by that back tire it's just crazy positive camber and looks wild but it drives really good and it performs even better so that's cool but uh yeah everything's hooked up and i gotta tell you like right now i ain't lying to you if you got to do this entire like rack setup and you've got to cut it and do all this work give yourself at least at least two weeks because it's not just, you know, unbolt here, bolt up here. It's a lot of fabrication work from getting the subframe or the cross member, taking it out, cutting it, and welding the piece on. You know, if you don't know how to weld, then you have to have someone else do it for you. And then just like little tedious things like different tie rods that you have to cut and, you know, you know slice to, to fit and um, building brackets for power steering lines. And there was a few other stupid things. Like we had, uh, we kept finding issues with the steering column, basically like the steering column where it comes out of the tunnel. There's like, the tunnel's about that far wide and the shaft that comes out of the tunnel is like this, but it's like an oval. So when you turn, it gets wider and it would hit the tunnel. So we learned that the adapter that PBM sends you with the kit is not made to go on the rack to space out the steering column. It's actually made to flip, put on the steering column, and then space the steering column to the rack. And that allows you to keep that little blue piece right there, which seals water out of your uh, your rack. So it's just little things like that. It takes a while. It's a pain in the butt, I know, but it's done and I am ready to absolutely shred with this car. Um, I've got a little surprise for you guys. I can't say what it is yet, but if you know me on Instagram, you already know what it is because I've been talking about it. But in the next video, we're going to be revealing some crazy news for this car and you guys are going to absolutely love it. It's going to start a whole new series. I can't tell you what it is yet, but you guys got to stay tuned. So again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog. I hope this helps you out. Um, you really don't need to do it unless you're running offset rack spacers. Um, but if you don't have a lot of angle, you're not doing a lot of damage. So if you're running like a GK Tech kit, uh, like my dad's car, he's got the offset rack spacers, which you can see right here. Uh, actually it's under the boot, but he's running offset rack spacers, but he's only got a GK Tech kit, so he doesn't have a lot of angle, so he's not doing a lot of damage on the rack. So it should last him, you know, three to four years before it blows out. But he'll still have to do it eventually but again if you guys need you know to do this that is exactly how it's done it is a pain I don't care what anyone tells you it is an absolute pain in the you know what because they're like I said the little pieces and then all this stuff and fitting issues and but the car drives better than ever before and I got to tell you it like the steering is so smooth now it's absolutely insane so I love it car drives better than it ever has driven before and uh, definitely if you gotta go this route get the PBM kit it's on their website I think it's $300 and then you have to get the uh, steering column adapter which is like 80 bucks you can cut the adapter by the way the steering column adapter piece and extender you can cut if you have to cut it if you're running like a custom um, steering column setup or if it's a different like car like a two, uh, 240 I believe they said the S13 it works on as well because the S13 uh, shares the same kind of steering column as the Z but it's like a little bit longer so you have to cut the piece a little shorter so 
it is what it is. It's an absolute mess, but again, it's like $300 on PBM, uh, parts by Max, and it's a great kit. It just is a pain to install. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.